Have you ever thought of gambling, that exhilarating dance with Lady Luck where fortunes hang in the balance, and the thrill of the unknown beckons like a siren's call? If you've contemplated taking that leap, only to step back cautiously, you're not alone. But what if I told you there's a captivating world where gamblers not only defied the odds, but crafted moments of sheer brilliance that left a mark on the annals of history? Imagine the rush of a poker hand that unfolded like a perfectly orchestrated symphony or a strategic blackjack move that seemed to defy logic. Have you ever wondered what separates the ordinary gambler from the genius, the mere player from the strategist? Ever pondered how card counting in blackjack took root? Or why the Monte Carlo Casino stands as an emblem of elegance and opulence in the heart of Monaco? Do you find yourself questioning the mathematics behind the roulette wheel or the psychology that fuels the allure of the one-armed bandit? And perhaps you've wondered if there's more to poker than just luck and bluffs. As we delve into the stories of legendary gamblers like Joseph Jagger, who broke the bank at Monte Carlo, or the enigmatic MIT blackjack team that practically rewrote the rules of card counting, you'll find yourself on a roller coaster ride of ingenuity, daring, and strategy. So, dear viewer, have you ever thought about gambling? If you have, then this is your chance to step into a world where the intersection of skill, strategy, and serendipity has created unforgettable moments. And if you haven't, well, this journey might just make you reconsider your stance. So, are you ready to roll the dice on a thousand IQ moments in gambling history? Number six, when a mathematics professor decided to beat the gambling system. Edward O. Thorpe, a name that reverberates through the annals of gambling history, is far from your average gambler. In the fascinating realm of blackjack, he is the man who turned the odds on their head and changed the game forever. With a keen mathematical mind and a knack for taking risks, Thorpe set out on a journey that would revolutionize the world of gambling. Imagine a time when blackjack was largely seen as a game of chance. But Thorpe, armed with his mathematical prowess, saw beyond the facade of randomness. He meticulously devised a system for card counting, a concept that would become the cornerstone of his legend. This system allowed him to predict with astonishing accuracy when the deck was stacked in his favor, enabling him to place bets that defied conventional wisdom. As he stepped into the gambling arenas of Las Vegas in the early 1960s, Thorpe's intellect was his secret weapon. His groundbreaking book, Beat the Dealer, published in 1962, unveiled his revolutionary strategies to the world. It wasn't just about winning, it was about shifting the balance of power in the casino's favor. Thorpe's method wasn't merely theoretical, it was practical and effective. With his card counting system, he won an astounding 11,000 in his first weekend of blackjack, an amount equivalent to around 100,000 today. The casinos were left baffled and began to change their rules in response to this newfound threat. In the world of gambling, Edward O. Thorpe was not just a player. He was a game changer. He turned a game of chance into a strategic battle of wits. And he asked himself the question that most gamblers dared not ponder. Oh, can I beat the system? Thorpe not only answered that question, but etched his name in the history of gambling as the man who did. Today, his net worth is around $800 million, and he is living the best life possible. Number 5. When Bill Benter decided to follow the path shown by Edward Thorpe. Born and raised in the heart of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, William Benter is no ordinary math enthusiast. With a burning desire to turn his numerical prowess into a lucrative venture, he wasted no time. Immediately after donning a university physics degree in 1977, he embarked on an exhilarating journey bound for the blackjack tables of Las Vegas. Armed with an extraordinary ability to count cards, Benter was like a maestro orchestrating the symphony of chance. Amid the shimmering lights of Sin City, fate led him to the legendary Beat the Dealer by Edward O. Thorpe, the tome that would become the key to unlocking his potential. The strategies within its pages refined his skills, turning him into a card-counting virtuoso. Seven years of astonishing victories later, the Vegas Strip's casinos united in a chorus of fear and defiance. Alan Woods, a kindred spirit in the world of gambling, 
Wood's expertise in the arcane art of horse racing harmonized seamlessly with Benter's formidable computer intellect. These two mavericks, driven by their shared vision, joined forces and set their sights on a new horizon, the vibrant streets of Hong Kong. Their journey began with a mere 150,000, a sum that would swell to over 420,000 in today's currency. With calculators and conviction, they embarked on a quest to decode the language of the race course, crafting a formula that would pick winners from the chaos of the tracks. Benter, with his analytical mind, unearthed key factors that held the power to predict race outcomes with unprecedented accuracy. His software was a symphony of statistical elegance. In 1988, he reaped the fruits of his labor. Number four, when Joseph Jagger broke the bank using his analytical power. Joseph Jagger, born in the quaint town of Cock Hill, Shelf, Yorkshire, on September 2, 1830, wasn't destined for the limelight of the gambling world. In his early years, he toiled in the textile trade in Bradford, an ordinary man with ordinary aspirations. He married Matilda, and together they welcomed two sons and two daughters into the world. But life had a different plan for Jagger. By 1871, he found himself described as a peace worker, struggling to make ends meet. His attempt to start his own textile business turned into a financial quagmire, threatening him with bankruptcy and the weight of four children to provide for. Then, in a twist of fate, Jagger's life took an exhilarating turn around 1880. Together with his eldest son, Alfred, and his nephew Oates Jagger, they embarked on a daring adventure to Monte Carlo. This was a desperate gamble, fueled by borrowed money from friends and family. The spinning roulette wheels at the Casino de Monte Carlo were far from perfect. They had inherent biases, and he was determined to exploit them. For an entire month, he meticulously studied the casino's tables, seeking patterns and numbers that emerged with unusual frequency. Armed with his newfound knowledge, Jagger began placing strategic bets that defied chance. His calculated wagers reaped an astonishing reward. He was rumored to have won over two million francs in the span of several days, equivalent to a staggering 80,000 pounds at the time. In today's currency, that amounts to 7.5 million pounds in 2018, a sum that defied belief. His triumph was so monumental that it even gave rise to the term breaking the bank. This was used when a gambler exceeded the casino's table reserve, which typically held 100,000 francs, known as the bank. When Jagger's winnings eclipsed this reserve, play at the table came to a halt, requiring additional funds to be retrieved from the casino's vaults. A black cloth was ceremoniously draped over the table, signaling that the bank had been broken. After a brief intermission, play resumed. Jagger's success was so impactful that the roulette table manufacturers had to introduce movable partitions to thwart his method. Upon returning to Yorkshire, he invested his newfound wealth by purchasing houses in Little Horton, Bradford, securing the future for his family. Number three, when a group of MIT students decided to apply mathematics to a casino system. In the realm of gambling, there exists a legendary tale that has become synonymous with cunning, teamwork, and the power of mathematics. It's the story of the MIT Blackjack team, a group of brilliant individuals who defied the odds, casinos, and even the very concept of chance itself. The saga of this team offers a profound insight into how a group of exceptional individuals, through rigorous training, Mathematical genius and calculated precision managed to outsmart casinos at their own game. The story begins in the late 1970s when J.P. Massar and Bill Kaplan, two visionary minds, were inspired by Edward O. Thorpe's groundbreaking book, Beat the Dealer. This publication unveiled the potential of card counting and blackjack, setting their minds on a daring path. Massar and Kaplan embarked on a quest to assemble a team of brilliant students from MIT and other universities, each possessing the essential attributes of mathematical prowess, discipline, and unflinching composure. To become part of the MIT Blackjack team, aspirants had to undergo a grueling selection process. Their mathematical skills were scrutinized, but more importantly, their ability to stay cool under the relentless pressure of a casino floor and work cohesively as a team was tested. Those who passed this rigorous test were initiated into an intense training program, a program that would make or break them. 
Central to their training was the high-low card counting system, a method that would later become the linchpin of their strategy. The high-low system was the cornerstone of the MIT team's strategy. In this system, every card is assigned a value. Low cards, 2, 6, receive a value of plus 1. Neutral cards, 7 to 9, are given a value of 0. And high cards, 10 to ace, get a negative 1 value. This system allowed team members to keep a running count of the deck, indicating whether it was rich in high cards, favorable for players, or low cards, favorable for the dealer. Armed with this knowledge, players could adjust their bets accordingly. Team members had specific roles at the blackjack tables. Spotters were tasked with observing and counting cards discreetly, while big players were entrusted with placing high-stakes bets when the deck was favorable. To avoid detection by casino staff, team members communicated using subtle signals, ensuring their covert operation remained unexposed. A critical element of their strategy was bankroll management. The team maintained a substantial pooled bankroll to fund the big players' bets and cushion potential losses. By spreading the risk across multiple tables and players, they minimized the impact of unfavorable outcomes. The MIT Blackjack team's journey was a roller coaster of triumph and tribulation. They harnessed their collective skills to amass substantial profits in numerous casinos across the United States. However, they faced daunting challenges, including increasingly stringent countermeasures implemented by casinos. These measures ranged from frequent deck shuffling to heightened surveillance and eventually resulted in their ban from many gambling establishments. Beyond their financial achievements, the MIT Blackjack team left a lasting legacy. They demonstrated that with discipline, collaboration, and mastery of mathematics, it was possible to gain a formidable advantage in a game traditionally seen as pure luck. Their story inspired books, documentaries, and even a Hollywood film, 21, which brought their exploits to a global audience. And while the master of this group hasn't disclosed how much they made, it is estimated that the amount is no less than a staggering 60 million. Number two, when a not-so-successful gambler changed the fate of the gambling world. In the realm of famous sports gamblers, Andrew Black stands as a unique figure not for amassing riches from beating the house, but for creating the house itself. He's the mastermind behind the behemoth known as Betfair, the very first and largest exchange site in the world. Black's journey in the world of gambling took a different turn. While he didn't find fortune through profitable bets, he embarked on a far grander gamble, investing his life savings and seeking other like-minded investors to breathe life into a revolutionary sports exchange platform. Betfair made its debut in 2000, and from the moment it went live, it drew in millions of punters from every corner of the globe. What's astonishing is that Andrew Black's net worth in 2020 soared to a staggering 500 million pounds, which is around 600 million, all thanks to the enormous risk he undertook. But let's dive deeper into the man behind the legend. Andrew Black, born on May 13, 1963, is the son of a property developer and the grandson of Sir Cyril Black, a Tory MP for Wimbledon who was known for his campaigns against gambling. Andrew's journey through the world of education took him to King's College School in Wimbledon, where he showcased exceptional aptitude in mathematics. He later pursued higher education at the University of Exeter, though his college days took an unexpected turn. He found himself leaving during his second year, confessing later that most of his time was spent at the bookies rather than lecture halls. The transition to his professional life took him to the bustling heart of the city of London, where he worked for a derivatives business. But beneath the surface, Andrew Black was quietly ascending the ranks as a shrewd gambler. His winnings eventually reached a point where he could afford to quit his day job and concentrate solely on gambling. However, the idea of full-time gambling didn't promise the financial stability he needed, particularly as he embarked on married life. It was then that he decided to set up a software business. This venture found success when it secured an on-site contract at GCHQ, where he was locked out of the office every day at 5 p.m.
This gave him the perfect opportunity to refine his concepts for a groundbreaking bet exchange. As fate would have it, Andrew Black forged a friendship with Edward Ray through their shared passion for bridge. He showed Ray a prototype of his innovative exchange platform, piquing his interest and securing an investment. The momentous launch of Betfair in 2000, funded by £1 million from friends and family, marked a turning point in the world of sports betting. Notably, their requests for venture capital investment had been rebuffed by the funds they initially approached. What set Betfair apart was its revolutionary model that resembled a financial exchange rather than traditional betting. This allowed multiple smaller bets to fill a position offered by gamblers looking to place large wagers. Alongside the acquisition of Flutter in 2001, Betfair swiftly established its dominance, seizing 90% of the bet exchange market in the UK within a few years. In essence, Andrew Black's creation of Betfair was a stroke of genius that changed the gambling landscape forever. It introduced a paradigm shift, moving away from traditional bookmakers to a peer-to-peer -peer betting model. This innovation not only disrupted the industry but revolutionized how bets were placed and matched. Andrew Black's journey from a gambler to a trailblazing entrepreneur reshaped the gambling industry, making him a deserving entry on the list of 1,000 IQ moments in gambling history. His ingenious venture altered the very foundation of sports betting, a feat worthy of its place in the annals of gambling legends. Number one, when Don Johnson opted for a different way and won millions. What set Don Johnson apart from the conventional image of a professional blackjack player was his astonishing ability to amass a fortune at the tables without relying on the stereotypical card counting skills. Instead, he employed an ingenious strategy, leveraging a unique blackjack rule and a shrewd loss rebate deal with the casinos. This approach allowed him to craft what can only be described as a positive expectation bet, offering him a distinct edge due to minimizing losses. The result? A staggering $15 million in winnings left the gambling world in awe. Born in 1962, Don Johnson's journey through life led him from the corporate world to the heart of the gambling arena. At the age of 30, he was entrusted with the management of Philadelphia Park, a racetrack that would later evolve into the park's casino. Johnson's professional journey also took him through roles as a state regulator in Oregon, Idaho, Texas, and Wyoming. However, his entrepreneurial spirit led him to found Heritage Development, a Wyoming-based company that harnessed computer-assisted wagering programs for horse racing. The turning point in Johnson's life and gambling career arrived during the financial crisis of 2008 when casinos, desperate to allure high rollers, were willing to make unprecedented offers. In 2010, Don Johnson was presented with high-stakes opportunities and displayed an unmatched aptitude for negotiation. He was able to secure several alterations to the standard rules of casino blackjack, each of which tilted the mathematical odds in his favor. These rule changes included compelling the dealers to stand on soft 17, an enticing 20% rebate that saw the casino refund a substantial portion of its losses, employing six decks, the ability to resplit aces, and more. These tweaks turned the tables in his favor. One unforgettable session at the Tropicana Casino etched his name in the annals of gambling history. During a grueling 12-hour marathon, Johnson experienced a series of astounding victories. In one mind-boggling hand, he won a jaw-dropping $1.2 million. How did he do it? It began with a $100,000 bet where he was dealt two eights, a classic hand for splitting. But the astonishing part was yet to come. Another pair of eights arrived. And Johnson split once more, taking his total wager to an astounding $400,000. The cards seemed to dance in his favor as three threes and two twos appeared on the subsequent hands. With a strategic double down on each, Johnson was now wagering an eye-watering 800000 As luck would have it, the dealer busted, and Johnson emerged with a stunning 800000 in profit. Under the conditions he had skillfully negotiated, Johnson systematically dismantled the Tropicana, walking away with nearly six million in his pockets. He repeated this remarkable feat at the Borgata, where he extracted five million 
and then at Caesars adding another four million to his ever-growing pile of winnings. His total haul stood at a breathtaking 15.1 million, significantly denting casino profits. The consequences were swift with Tropicana and Borgata, while not officially banning Johnson putting limitations on his play under those conditions. Caesars, on the other hand, effectively shut its doors to him. However, due to his extraordinary skills, he is now known as the best blackjack player in the world and enjoys his life to the fullest, proving wit is mightier than luck.